Clive Barker's Hellraiser universe treads the thin line between pain and pleasure expertly. Each of the Cenobites we come across in his stories has a dark origin, and Alistair is no different. Just like every other Cenobite, he too has his main obsession, a source of pleasure depicted in his Cenobite form. For others, it could be having CDs or syringes, but for Alistair, it is his lover tied to him with a golden chain. So now the question is, what led to his lover being trapped with him in the gory life of Cenobites? Today Today in our video, we will be looking into Alistair's life and what happened to him. So get cozy and let's get to it. But before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Alistair from Human to Cenobite. We are introduced to Alistair in the Hellraiser Nightbreed crossover comic duology titled Hellraiser Nightbreed Jihad. In the first issue, we meet Peliquin. Peliquin is a nightbreed. They are the creatures of chaos. With his tentacled hair, Peliquin loses himself in the pleasure of his human lover's flesh. However, the thing is, his lover, Pats, is actually not single. She was in a relationship with Tony, who bought her the house we saw her and Peliquin in. Tony figured that Pats was cheating on him and decided to show up at the house, hoping to beat up both Pats and her lover. When Tony arrived at the house, he ordered his men to attack, but before they could, Peliquin jumped through the window. To Pat's surprise, Peliquin had no hesitation in attacking Tony and his men. He bit into one of the henchmen's kneecaps, causing blood to gush out, but refused to let go. Pelican continued his brutal assault, injuring the henchman as a warning to Tony. In the midst of this chaos, Tony manages to get his hands on Pats and holds her hostage. He threatened to kill Pats, but before he can pull the trigger, at a moment's notice, Tony's hand holding the revolver falls to the ground. Pelican threatens Tony, claiming he would be more than happy to give Tony his attention. Using this as a distraction, one of Tony's men manages to stab Pelican in his back. Peliquin retaliates, killing the henchman swiftly. Tony, seeing Peliquin's back towards him, decided that now would be the time to murder him. Luckily, Pats noticed it and shot him dead before he could kill Peliquin. Pat brings Peliquin to safety, and the lovers recuperate from the event. And we see Pinhead and his order of gash. Nightbreeds and Cenobites exist in the same world, but they operate differently. Pinhead didn't have much respect for the Nightbreed, and their free reign in the human world frustrated him. So in his next meeting with Leviathan, Pinhead raised the issue, pointing out the chaos they were causing. Right then, Alistair interjected in the conversation. Alistair is far too new to the Order to speak in front of Leviathan. He had roughly 6,500 years before he could be experienced enough to speak to the deity. Pinhead tries to stop him, pointing out the protocol, but Leviathan stops him. The deity wished to know what Alistair had to say about the Nightbreed. Alistair introduced himself and his rank, along with his own Order of Gash. With Chalkies, Gehenna, Karun, Yama, Vadadu, and Aesmadeva, Alistair's group was ready for a brutal fight. He told Leviathan that he and his order were the solution to the Nightbreed problem that Leviathan was searching for. He and his men could simply go out there and kill off all the Nightbreed. Leviathan agrees to his passionate speech and calls for a holy war, a jihad. Despite this being Alistair's urging, Pinhead ended up being involved in this jihad owing to his status as leader. After being insulted by Pinhead, Alistair and his cronies sit down to talk about their plan. We soon realize that he actually has some other motives for going back to Earth and going after the Nightbreed. Instead of solving just the box to open the gateway from Hell to Earth, Alistair was hoping to use the obsession of mortals as a gateway. So how does he make that gateway? Well, in the depths of Hell, there was a a bull-like creature called Atsa. It obsesses over its own escape. It wants to break free and enjoy the taste of freedom like it used to. Alistair shows up there, and when the creature asks for respite, Alistair gives it eternal respite by smashing his hammer down its skull. The obsession for freedom leads to the gateway opening, and Alistair shows up on Earth with his cronies. The Nightbreed camp falls under attack. Pinhead and his trusted right-hand man, Chatterer, showed up at the Nightbreed camp just to witness the brutality of 
Alistair's attack. The whole group waged war on the unsuspecting Nightbreeds, almost getting the upper hand in the fight. Pinhead was not happy with Alistair's brutality. It was not up to the code of honor for the Cenobites. He told Alistair that what he was doing was wrong and that he would be answerable to Leviathan himself. But to that, Alistair reminded that even though Pinhead doesn't like it, the order of the Jihad came from Leviathan himself, and there is not a lot that Pinhead can do to stop him. Alistair even beats down Pinhead with his weapon, causing several of the pins to fall out. Before he could finish Pinhead, Chatterer grabbed onto the blade, breaking Alistair's stride. Luckily, the Nightbreeds were not unfamiliar with the Cenobites and the Puzzle Box. One of them managed to solve the Puzzle Box, forcing Alistair and his group to return to Hell. But before leaving Earth, Alistair warned the Nightbreed that while he was returning to Hell, there was another puzzle that was waiting to be solved. Once that one is solved, they will not be able to stop Alistair and others from receiving their death sentence. Despite solving the Lament configuration, Pinhead and Chatterer were not sent back to Hell. The Nightbreed captured the two Cenobites and treated them like prisoners of war. One of the Nightbreeds put worms inside Pinhead's skulls as a torture method, but soon realized that his plans were backfiring on them. Peliquin, Pinhead, and Eric Boone, aka Cabal the Savior, despite their ill feelings towards each other, put their differences aside and joined hands to go up against Alistair. To understand the enemy, they decided to learn more about who he was back in the day. This is where we learn the horrifying truth about Alistair and how he ended up joining Leviathan. So, when Alistair was a human, he was in love with a girl named Chalkies. He was truly devoted to her, and it was evident from the way Chalkies behaved that she loved him too. However, when Alistair tries to show Chalkies how much he loves her, Chalkies refuses. Seeing Chalkies' refusal, Alistair makes it a point to investigate and learn why she does not wish to be with him despite the love she holds for him. He went to her house, unbeknownst to her, and looked in through the window. What he saw shocked him to his core. Chalkies lived with her brother and father. On arriving home from wherever they were, the father-son duo told Chalkies they were hungry. Chalkies started serving them stew, but her father ignored the food and took hasty steps towards her. He was hungry alright, but not for food. This is where Alistair learned that Chalkies was being abused by both her brother and father. While Chalkies was apologetic for the abuse and the impurity she had because of it, Alistair felt differently. He didn't think she had anything to apologize for. The only thing that they needed to do was to avenge all the things lost. In a murderous rampage, Alistair killed Chalkies' brother. Chalkies took her brother's dead body and cooked it into a stew. She fed the stew to her father, and when her father realized that he had eaten his son, he choked and died. The two lovers get together, and eventually, when Alistair ends up in hell, Leviathan looks at him and decides he will make an excellent Cenobite. By Leviathan's decree, Alistair and Chalkies were bound together for life with a golden chain. They were close to each other and yet so far apart. They could not hold each other, kiss each other, or have love for each other the way they had hoped for. This is what made Alistair so angry about the Nightbreed. He knew that the Nightbreed could readily indulge in these relationships, but as a Cenobite, he had many rules and regulations to follow. So, using this Jihad, Alistair wanted to dethrone Leviathan for good and end up becoming the god himself. That way, he could create new rules that were better suited to his personal needs and happiness. Cabal is taken to raise Baphomet, their deity, for this fight. During the raising procedure, the Priest of Hell finally figures out what exactly Alistair wishes to do and how he wants to achieve his goal. Turns out, Alistair managed to create a new form of the puzzle which keeps solving itself every minute. And that puzzle was the embryo in Peliquin's lover's womb. Finally, Peliquin realized what sacrifice he needed to make. Eventually, when the time was right, Alistair and his group showed up to finally defeat the Nightbreed for good. With Baphomet on their side, Peliquin and Pinhead joined the fight, marking the beginning of the Jihad. Alistair was taken aback at the sight of Pinhead and Peliquin joining forces together. Realizing that sacrifices needed to be made, Peliquin used a sword and pierced his lover's womb. He apologized gravely as she bled away in his arms. Seeing that the puzzle no longer existed and Alistair did not have the upper hand anymore, Pinhead declared 
declared his judgment. He stripped Alistair, Chalkies, and whoever remained from their troop off their ranks, deeming them unfit to serve the legions of hell. However, Alistair and Chalkies were happy to hear the news. With their ranks getting stripped off, their bodies returned to their normal state, finally allowing the two lovers to hold each other. However, this happiness is short-lived, as Pelequin jumps on top of the embracing lovers and uses his teeth to rip them apart into shreds, tasting the sweet red that he oh so craves. Pinhead prepares for his return to hell. Cabal asks him if this is how it truly has to be and if it would be better if the two races could coexist together without any problems. To that, Pinhead remarks that the partnership that they shared, while necessary, was temporary. Whether it's ten years or a thousand years, one day the Nightbreeds will face the end of their disastrous immortality. And when that happens, the Cenobites will be there to savor the triumph of the Order of the Chaos. Facts or Truth Interesting Facts of Alistair Alistair is this huge, fat Cenobite with a tuft of hair seemingly coming out from the top of his head. He has a golden arrow sticking out of his head and a golden chain wrapped around his entire face. These chains act like decorative ornaments, and they are hooks that stretch Alistair's mouth open. On his back, you always notice a dark black blob with an owl mask. This is Chalky's. Other than her human hands with red nails, none of her human flesh remains. Her wings and tail are made up of human hair and not feathers. On her right hand, you would notice a golden band with a chain connected to it. That is the chain that wraps around Alistair's waist, binding the two lovers together. You will also see that right over Alistair's heart, there seems to be a patch of skin that differs from his skin tone and is stitched there with the golden chain. Other than that, Alistair has the signature piercings that all Cenobites have and is seen wearing a leather outfit. He has many gold rings on his body, and his weapon of choice is a battle axe. Now, the question remains, what led to Alistair's revolting against Leviathan and the Order of Gash as a whole? Well, it could be that he committed treason after listening to Doomsdayer's speech, expressing his doubts about the protection methods directed at Cenobites by Leviathan, but we can't be sure. Alistair also happens to be the one who discloses Chatterer's real name for the first time ever. For those who don't know it, it is Mictlant to Cutley. Marvelous Verdict Who would have thought that Cenobites and Nightbreeds would end up entangled in a holy war like this? I for sure did not. Either way, Alistair's comeuppance is definitely satisfying to watch, and seeing Pinhead go beyond his ill feelings to get the troops he needs to defeat a greater threat is enjoyable. Let us know in the comments what you think about Alistair and the Cenobite Nightbreed Jihad comic books as a whole. Until next time, take care. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks, everyone.